Right. It is four minutes past, so I'm going to get going because we've got 26 people. So six of you will miss out. This is all just going to be based on my whims. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an icebreaker, uh, which is name, pronoun, where you're from, company, local authority. Quick question, short-term high bikes, how bad are they or how good are they? Um, with, those are the Santander, Boris bikes, whatever you want to call them. Um, then we'll go through the plan for this meeting. We're going to go through a year in NAPTAN, which is me telling you some of what I've learned inside of this year. I'm going to talk about where we are now and what's coming up. Um, then I'm going to ask you for some feedback. We want to know your best moments of the year. We're going to hold, we won't, won't be an awards ceremony, but we'll just find out the things that have worked, the things that haven't, and we'll get some feedback from you on what we could improve and do next year to make this smoother, better, funner, whatever. Sounds good? So, from the top. Hey, I'm Dr. J. Uh, I use they as a pronoun. I'm a service designer, business analyst, and I'm working as the service designer for this redevelopment of NAPTAN. So uh, just quickly for everybody, going back through, hopefully everyone's got access to the mural. Just let me know if you can't. The reason that I don't share my screen with it is that because of my setup, it then means you can't see me. And obviously, of course, you'll want to see me when I yak her away. Um, so very quickly, the plan for this meeting, we've done icebreakers and intros. I'm going to talk through a year in NAPTAN pretty much. It's going to be a bit of what Jay's learned. Jay has not learned any geography, but I've mastered a whole pile of other things about NAPTAN. Um, where we are now, what's coming up uh, in January? Um, then I, I was going to ask you for some reflection. I wanted to get your best moments of the year, your best thoughts of working with us on take going on this journey and to get some feedback from you around how we've done and how we're going, which we can then take into what's going on. <clears throat> so I think it was about November November last year, so it's a little bit over a year in NAPTAN, um, we started doing some public meetings to try and understand how people were using this NAPTAN thing that we were trying to redevelop. And thanks to Tim, we started to get involved and we had people broken down into data uploaders and data downloaders. We started to talk to people and try and understand. And one of the first things that I did was just go, can you tell me what a bus stop is? And just try and get people to explain to me what a bus stop looks like. Now, coming from another country and landing in London, I only saw bus stops as one particular thing, as you drawn here, a very London looking bus stop with its uh, shelter with a seat and all the advertising and the where to catch other buses and the pole with all of the buses that can stop at the stop. And I thought that was a bus stop. And as one of the discussions that started was, well, a bus stop can just be a patch of ground at the end of a driveway. And if you happen to stand there at the right time of day and wave your arm, a bus comes along and you can catch the bus and the driver will stop for you. And it might not actually even have even a marked pole or something. It's just patch of grass that everyone knows that if you happen to stand there, you can catch the bus or somewhere near there, you can catch the bus. And that was a really big understanding and a big change for a lot of us working, starting to work on NAPTAN, of understanding what the physical and the data realities actually were. And we started to really understand who was putting the data in, who was taking the data out, what was, what was the difference between a logical and a physical bus stop. So that was a lot of January. In a lot of February, we started to look at the business rules because that was a big thing that we were being asked about is these business rules, what do they mean? What does what does anything mean? You'll hear business rules run throughout the year. Um, we're still working on them. Um, but we had our first attempt at trying to understand what business rules were. We tried to collate them all and get a better idea. And at this point, I think it's about February, but possibly was slightly later. Um, well, also having no sense of geography, I also have no real sense of time. So I've done my best as to when things happened. We started to think of the groupings of people slightly differently. So rather than describing you by the thing that you did with NAPTAN, we started to describe you by the way that you interacted with the data of NAPTAN, because a lot of the people who put the data in also needed to download it. So we split people into things like data producers, 
So we started to look at the people who produced the NAP10 data, what their lives were like, what they were trying to do, how NAP10 fits into their world, and also look at the data consumers, how people consume the NAP10 data, how NAP10 data then fits into their world, and what they do with it and, and how they look at it. And that change and it sounds like a small change in language actually really changed some of our mindsets of how we thought about people and how we thought about what people did um then i think it was march we started to get really interested with everybody in what dft systems other people used and trying to understand if our data producers and our data consumers use different parts of all of these systems because we know that there's nubtig mptg which is Gazetteer, which tells us where everything is. There's Naptan that tells us where public stops are, but and then ref, and then re, uses Nubtig to say where that suburb is and where that locality is. Um, there's, that data then goes into BODS, and BODS or Bus Open Data Service is really interesting. It's still being developed, and there's a whole pile of inter, interactions between Naptan data and BODS data that we need to start to become more and more aware of. Um, the street manager, which is what is used by people to manage the street works going on. And we were trying to understand how the groups that we were talking to interacted with street manager, because that was one of the things that we had a, a thought of, oh, street manager sounds like a really good sp spot for kind of putting some of this data and creating some nice data layers doing some more stuff and it turns out nobody's touching it it's all with other departments and those interactions that we thought oh this would be a really nice thing may or may not actually work out there's also the fares which is going into bods um, there's trans exchange which isn't shown on here which is the the previous bods and will eventually be replaced by bods when bods does all the same things as trans exchange does there's the incident reporting system um, for saying hey there's a problem, we need to reroute this bus. And there's also the real-time bus information of where a bus is currently and how that matches to where it's supposed to be. Um, there's also a ton more. There's also, a, there should be all of this for rail, for ferries and for airports. That's a whole thing that we'll get onto. So we, we kind of asked a lot of people about how you interact with these different systems. And we were trying to really get an idea of how NAPTAN data is being used and why it's important. And not just why it's important, because we knew we were working on something really cool, but also how it's used and what's the important things that people are using on it. So then in April, based on this, <laughs> we were able to do a couple of things. And I think this was when we passed our alpha assessment, although Adrian was possibly going to tell me it was the very end of April, start of May, that, that we could do this because it all got a little bit blurred as to when we finished our alpha assessment, which was one of the things we needed to do to go into private beta. And when we actually went into private beta, got stretched a little bit more rubbery than we expected on time. Um, so... In April, we passed our alpha assessment. We went in front of the GDS assessors and they said we've, we've done all of the things that they that, that they expected. Um, down in the bottom here is a copy of the scope from that time, which has changed slightly because we found some things out. We found some things were harder than others. We needed some things took a little bit longer. So we needed a little bit more time just to iterate them and get them right because you think you've done the right thing and then you find out you've got to tweak it and move it and then you test it and you find out actually you've got to tweak and move it a little bit more. Um, just for context, when we did our what one of our assessments, the word comprehensive was used when we showed that we had done 21 iterations of a single of a single journey. So we've gone through a lot of work to try and figure out the best ways to make some of the download journeys and the way that you get data from NAPTAN as easy as possible. And we've done a lot of different iterations on these, which has taken time because we need to go and go, oh, actually, should we try it this way? And does this work slightly better? And also doing the same thing with the systems in the back end that are producing the data to make sure that they're being solid and the data that's coming out is good and of high quality. So if we just zoom in off to that, it's 2025. This bit hasn't changed. It's gained a few more hexagons um, in the last year. 
um, but it hasn't changed. And visiting Seahorse, I'll just get rid of your nice big square. Um, so it's, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to summon everybody. Ka-chow! You all now follow me. Um, so what we're looking at is we have our data producers here who are going to use an API or a web UI or some kind of interface to upload data. They upload data. There is some kind of identity service that helps us know who people are. They've got BAPTAN, we've got MPTG, we've got Orgazeteer of some sort, we've got BODS, we've got the FAIRS, we've got Street Manager, we've got CODS or the Coach Open Data Service or the National Coach Data Service. We've got real-time bus information. There's also rail, ferries, all of those things running around <coughs> in this ecosystem. All looked after by a DFT team. Sorry, excuse me for a second. Not COVID, chest infection. Um, very end of it. Then we've got our data consumers who can use a web or an API to download the data or to consume the data into their systems. And we've broken our data consumers into two big, biggish kind of groups. One is focusing on the consumer apps. And the other one is about the ecosystem apps. We've kind of broken it down so the ecosystem apps are the ones that feed in to planning bus routes, to planning routes, to um, making sure that the buses are on time and in the right places and all of those things. This is your ticketer, your VIX, the systems that people use for planning. And the consumer APIs or the consumer pieces are the ones that end up with something in somebody's hand. So the ecosystem apps often do things that then feed back round through the system that feed back into those hexagons that, it, that end up coming out in some way into those consumer apps. So we've just made a little bit of a, of a distinction there. And essentially the goal of everybody is getting more people using public transport. That's essentially everybody's goal in this entire system. So that's where we got to with scope. We then had some ideas of what's what's going to come up. There's still some pieces. One of the pieces that actually moved a lot in the last year has been create an API because that started as a very far forward thing. And as you'll hear, we're actually working on it and are likely to release it in the next couple in the next week or so, maybe a couple of weeks at the outside. But it's very, very much been one of those things that we've been able, the way that we've done planning, the way that we've taken an in input, we've been able to pivot and move around. <sighs> Taking a breath. Uh, we could start private beta, so we've done that. In May, we started the private beta. <laughs> For those who started to use the private beta, we had one page with one file type you, that, that you could download. It was, you went to a page, you pressed download, and that was the entirety of your journey. Um, but it was starting to build on that. And we, and we iterated and we tested. We took ideas to people and said, does this work? Do you want to do this? And thank you to everyone who got involved with that because it made such a big difference in being able to understand a lot more of what is going to make things work really, really well for you. Um, so you can see here we started off with just being able to download just all of the ACTO codes, so the national data um, as stop CSV, um, and then we were just taking prototypes and user testing with people. And that was a lot of May, a lot of June as well, we were doing more testing. Um, we started to chase down the local transport authority contact, contacts in earnest. We are still chasing some of the local authorities to find out where they are. Yes, Midlothian will be mentioned again. Um, there's also quite a few in Scotland. So Transport for Scotland links, we would definitely love to talk to anyone who's, I won't say who's got a knowledge of Scotland, who knows who some of the people might be in Scotland. We're getting a number of um, person not here mails and things like that, and we're just trying to chase down. I think we've got about 10 or so local transport authorities to chase down that we haven't been able to get a contact for. But that's been a big, uh, <laughs> from June to then, has been a big journey for us, just trying to find people. And then we've done an awful lot of these public meetings. So we started to get into what quality was and going over what the business rules were, which ones were most important, which ones made a difference to people, what sort of um, rules 
what they were intended for and what they were actually achieving now and how that interaction actually happened. Um, we got on to mapping and why mapping was important and how you built out business rules for mapping, again, naming, um, the levels of action on NAPTAN. This was a lot about how local authorities are built up and there was an entire thing. Uh, I think we had three people and we called them by different names and we tried to get who would be interested in what's going on. So there's somebody who's involved in policy, there's somebody we've now called it management, and there's somebody who does administration. And it's very much about just understanding how those three different levels should be named, what sort of ways you're thinking about them so we can get that perfect and really, really be able to come back with something that's going to work and fit your brains. We did more stuff on business rules. Um, and we also did a whole pile of things on archived and deleted stops. So we thought archived and deleted, this is gonna be easy. There's some rules in the schema about archived and deleted. It's not that it's not that simple. There's a lot of nuance that we want to go through and really, really understand um, how this can really be put together. Uh, we did lots more user te testing. In August, we did a lot more user testing. We spent about three months doing user testing. We also, in August, started to build out how we would do this migration. So we started to bring out to you what this, what this migration plan would look like. And because it's important for today, I'm just gonna quickly flip, flip through it. Hopefully you're all following me. I'm just going to do a quick summon, summon everybody to me. Kapow, there we are. So we have data producers, current NAPTAN data consumers. That's that's where we started. The mid-state is where we are now. The data producers send their data to current NAPTAN in the way that they always have. Some people are FTP uploading. Some people go via a website. There's, well, there's two, I was going to say there's a myriad. There's two ways that people put data into current NAPTAN. Before it hits current NAPTAN and get, gets processed, we're able to sneak it off and put it into new NAPTAN or not sneak it off, we're, we we copy it. So we take a copy of it and put it into new NAPTAN and we process it. And then that way we're able to see whether our processing and current NAPTAN's processing match. We know that it doesn't, we know there's a number of broken things in current NAPTAN. With the whole goal is the end state is eventually, once we've got everyone using new NAPTAN for putting in their, um, for downloading their data, I'll start that again. Once everyone's using new NAPTAN for consuming data, we can start to move people to new NAPTAN for putting in data because we only need to process it in the one place. We don't need to process, process it in both places and try to keep them aligned because there's no way we could keep them aligned because current NAPTAN is broken and does some broken things. As some of you know and some of you will have found out, um, this is the same thing kind of spelt out slightly differently. Um, this was uh, at the time when we produced it, the data producers were uploading to current NAPTAN for private beta phase one, they upload for public, for private beta phase two, they upload. So this is where we are currently here. DFT support, we, we do everything in current NAPTAN, but here with the data consumers, you're downloading from, you're able to download from the NAPTAN system, from both NAPTAN systems, at this point, we need everyone to start to move across to downloading only from new NAPTAN, not current NAPTAN. And the reason for that is once we get everyone downloading and we're only having to produce it in one way or prepare the data in one way, then we can start to turn that off and we can actually change how people upload and we can move people across because trying to keep the two systems in sync was just going to be a nightmare. Um, that's exactly what this kind of spells out. Uh, so September, we're racing through the year. We did more private beta. We did more pages and file types. We did a lot of user testing sessions and we started to prepare for our GDS assessment. So this is the thing that all, all government uh, projects need to go through. And it's going through and just checking that you've done all of the things that you should do to move on to the next phase. Um, and it, it shouldn't be an onerous assessment, but getting all the evidence together can be a bit onerous. It's very much having to show your workings. So one of the things that the team tend to do is because we use a lot of murals, we just collate everything together into really, really massive murals that shows all the different work that we've done. Um, 
we did some meetings on school stops and I know that that is still ongoing as to whether school stops need to be in and how we put them in and whether there's the fields to put them in, whether they should be in there. More than happy to sit down and have another discussion on that. Um, not today, but that's that's very clearly an area that we need to go in and discuss more on. Um, we also did another round of permissions. We got things a little bit more together, a little bit more thought out based on your feedback from the first round. And we got a lot better idea of what the permission should be in the different places. October. October was a brilliant month because we went for our private beta assessment and we passed it with flying colours first time. And that was a very, very huge thing because um, we had to go through and because we've done things slightly differently to how people expected. Normally, you do an entire system at a time. So we would normally have done all of NAPTAN, not just just the cons the consumption side, we would have done the production side as well. And we've, so we went through and had to basically show why we'd made that split, how we'd made that split, why that split was really important in the private beta and that all of those hypotheses have been proved, all of the work's been done and we're now ready to make this open and ready and go live to the public. Um, we got very nice words from our assessors. The word comprehensive was used more than once. Um, that month, we didn't do any public meetings, but we ran two working groups, uh, which I'm still working on some of the outputs from. Um, we did a working group on stops. So this was trying to show how we take the physical stop and represent it in the data on the different systems. And one of the things that has come out of there is there might be the need for something like the little ladybird book of a bus stop. Um, a very simplistic way of taking a lot of the complexity and describing it so it's like this is a bus stop and this is the sort of all these things go into the data in this way and this is a custom bus stop and it looks kind of like this in the data and just kind of spelling out a couple of the common bus stop types in a very clear way and some of the ways that they're used um, and part of this is because Everyone around the country, every local transport authority has used slightly different ways of describing the same thing over the years. So in 20 or so years, because Naptan could now go, I could now take it to the pub if it was a person, because um, it's old enough. Um, uh, it's slightly moved in places. People have different ways of describing the same bus stop. And one of the things that came out of these two working groups is the notion of perhaps doing a working, a wider working group of all of the local authorities run by DFT that's just about, here's our working practices, here's some of the problems, here's our way of solving this problem, what does everyone else think of this? And just kind of test out what's working in different systems, what some of the challenges that people are facing are, and describing what's on the street. Because what's on the street and what's in the data can sometimes be really hard to match up. For example, and, and just to give a really quick example, uh, and yes, I am the skeeky. Hale and Ride are supposedly an unmarked section. However, in London, Hale and Ride sections are marked on the street furniture with a little sign on, on the lamppost showing users or showing customers that in this, in this area around these lampposts, you can wave at a bus and it will stop basically as soon as it's safe to stop where you are. So they're marked Hale and Ride sections. But the schema, as it currently stands, says this is a mismatch of data. So this is one of the things of trying to understand where these mismatches are. Are they actually reflective of the current ground situation? And then what would we do to make this make sense of the schema, to make this make sense of the data, so that when someone's consuming the data, they've got a real understanding of what it means when they see Hale and Ride mark section. They've got a sense of what it's going to look like on the street what they're going to be showing to a user on their phone to say this is what you're going to look for in this area and if you stand there and wave your hand when you're between these lamp posts the bus driver will stop wherever it's safe between the cars and let you on the bus or let you off the bus and it's just trying to understand just trying to reflect that physical reality and data is really fascinating and interesting and you can see it gets me very excitable right november First of November, we went live. As many of you will have received an email. You were able to go to a, the NapTown site and actually download without asking for permission, without it being hidden. This is now a live, 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 live site called 
beta hyphen naptan something 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 because I only ever need to type in BET and it takes me to the right place on my on my laptop now. Hopefully everyone has seen that and is using it and is enjoying it. Um, part of this, and this is why I said the API came across, is the API is now being refined um, and is being built as a more stable service. So we built an API as part of what we were doing to make the system work. And then we started to think about, okay, so we've got this. How do we make it more stable? How do we start to make it public? How do we make it consumable by anyone? So that's some of what we're doing. We're starting to test some of the upload services. So we started that in November and we're continuing that now. So we're looking at how somebody who is a producer could send us the data. What are the things that, that's going on in your lives? How does, what are the different ways that you get the data from your systems? What are the different systems you're using? Are there nuances that we need to know about in your IT systems so that we can make the upload experience as easy as possible and as simple as possible for you? And the data from working groups got into planning and I will send those out to those working groups by Wednesday evening. I promise, hand on heart, all of those things, if you came along to them, I'll send you the preliminary workings out. And then if you approve those, I'll send them out to the wider group. So, deep breath. This brings us on to now. So where are we now in December? And yes, I realise it's not 2021. 20, <laughs> um, there is there is an extra zero in there because I have no sense of time. We are live. There's going to be an API that will be let out imminently. And this is to replace the people who are asking. This is to fill that need for the people asking for a URL for download or an FTP for download. So we're going to move you to an API because it's a URL. You can do things a little bit easier. You can query it. You can build things on it that's going to make your future a lot easier. And that's why we're trying to drive towards an API because it's a lot better than munting up a URL to get exactly what you want. We're actually looking at a system called Swagger, I think it is, but I'm not sure how what it's actually called, uh, where you can build the API up for yourself and make it easier for you to build it and to know exactly what you what you should be getting from that. Um, we're working out the last rough bits of the live service. We know there's a few little tweaks that people are asking for that we're having to go through and figure out and make sure that we've got in there so that you can start using the new NAPTAN over using the old NAPTAN. And we're refining the upload service. And this is all planned for January because in January 2022, after Christmas next year, when we come back, we're going to we're going to begin the decommissioning of downloading from current NAPTAN. So there will be a you will be sent lots of emails when it when it's going to happen, but there will be a time when you when you will only be able to download from new NAPTAN. So all of those different links will be turned off, and we're going to decommission them. We'll start, we'll finish building the upload services. Di, I'll come to you in two seconds. Um, because we've got everyone and we're processing only in one system, we can start to update all the 9x stops. We know that there's some requests that have come in. We also know that we need to fix some of the data and some of the 9 stops. Um, it's out of date. It's not been updated for years. It's not been double checked. There's a few missing bits and pieces. And we've been doing some tightening of the data there. And then what we're also going to start looking at is NubTig just NAPTAN or is it a ton different? And if it's very much like NAPTAN, we know some of the stuff and we can actually start looking at how we do the download and the upload piece for NubTig and do that a lot faster. A, it's a lot smaller database, but also we've learned so much from you all that we feel confident that, that we can start that. I'm going to pause for breath and I see that Di's got their hand up. Hi, um, were you aware that I can't import the new NAPTAN exports into Trapeze Novus? Have you told us this? No, I've told them. <laughs> ah, I'm supposed to be getting an, up, an upgrade, but, uh, you know, I've only just got the BODS compliant upgrade, so I'm not holding my breath. 
Uh, I know that Adrian has been talking with them, and uh, I'm not going to put Adrian on the spot. Nope. I can put Adrian on the spot. Well, I don't know how informative that'll be for people, but um, I, I've been chatting. There is one company that I was aware of that it wasn't working for them, but I, I understood it was just one company. I didn't realise there were more people were affected by that. Um, I'll pick that up with trapeze, but um, have they proposed a solution? I was wondering. An upgrade. Okay. But as I say, I've only just got the BODS compliant upgrade, so, you know, when this upgrade will come, I'm not sure. Thank you. We'll, we will keep an eye on that and we'll keep some pressure on them as well, Di. Thanks. Um, and just to reiterate, if you're having troubles consuming stuff, if you let us know, we can then start to also apply pressure from our side and we can also look at mitigations. How do we make this work for you in a way that's really sensible? Um, Tricia, I'll come to you and I'm just going to turn on the light. I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I've still got my headphones on. I was going to say I'm in the same situation as Di. Um, I can't download anything into my trapeze systems. Um, but I only tried that last week, so um, it, it's yeah, it's um, we we use two versions of um, trapeze. We use the Novus FX and the Novus RT, um, and I can't do it on either. So okay. um, because I have to use RT for real time at the moment, I'm having to create Naptan data in the Novus FX for Nottinghamshire, and then import it. But I'm struggling with the other surrounding authorities. So so yeah, but it, it, that only came to light last week, and I have raised it with them, but not really getting very far uh send it so um send us the details mm -hmm. and i'll get i'll get adrian and tom and tom westlake onto it um okay. onto onto looking at that one of the other things that i will say that we've that has been a big change of this year is and i should have put this up because it's only just now that i remember it we have totally changed the philosophy of how naptan works so previously you uploaded data into naptan if Naptan didn't like that data, if Naptan thought you'd given that data wrong, Naptan would just go and change it and not tell you. So it did some recalculations of mapping. It changed some of the settings that you put in. It changed some of the data that you gave. And it then put it out. We don't do that. We respect the source and we do any changes at source. So if there's, so what you'll often what people have been getting from us is me or a member of the team contacting and saying, oh yeah, we've, we're, we're looking at this and we need to understand why you do this with your stops or could you change your stops from this to this because we're needing to make this check work. And what we're trying to do is to stop us in the middle becoming intermediaries of what's good and hiding those problems from you. We're going to get you to update your data. And that's quite a big change. So, so one of the things that this means is if somebody gives us 2.4 data, we're putting out 2.4 data. If somebody gives us 2.1 data, we're putting out 2.1 data. Unfortunately, this means that the national file becomes a blend of 2.1 and 2.4 data, which I know is causing a little bit of uh, friction with some systems. And that's one of the reasons that we're needing to stay with this because what we don't want to do is be downgrading the data that people are giving us. If people are able to give us 2.4 data, it's better to take that data and, and push it out. It means that people who want to use 2.4 can actually use it from some of the local authorities, which is really important because we'd love you all eventually to move across to using 2.4 at some point in time. Uh, so, that is our year in Naptan. Does uh, apart from the occasional, uh, we can't we can't quite use it, and now that we know we can go into those and and have a little bit more. This is where I'd like to get some feedback from you all. So if you come across to number three, uh, where it's got number three, I'm just going to summon everybody. We've come a long way. I had to use a fat boy slim. A Fat Boy Slum album cover, of course, for this, because we have come a long way inside of a year. It's been a huge, huge change. Um, so what I'd like to do is ask everybody to put down one of the things that they have learned about Naptan in this year 
And on the in the other column, the best thing about working with Naptan this year has it been a great thing of working with us. So I'm going to give you five minutes just to throw some stickies up there, pardon me, and put them in. And it'd be really, really good to see what people have found, have learnt about Naptan and what people have found the greatest thing about working with the Naptan team or with Naptan this year. So let me just set it for five minutes and start the timer. Chris, I see you've got your hand up. Hello, yes, um, I've just got uh, several questions about the API um, and I'm not sure at what point it's going to be the best juncture to ask those questions. Uh, that would be really good, except I don't have the technical people on here. So you've got me who waves hands. You've got Adrian who does a little bit more than waving hands, but not 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 that much more. What might be best is if we set up for a proper technical deep dive into the API and what it's going to look like and things like that. Would that be useful for you? I mean, that will certainly be useful, and I don't want to turn that down. Um, more pressing, though, is that as far as I understand, you're turning off the current NAPTAN on the 31st of December, and it's a sixth now, which doesn't give us a lot of roadmap to to do anything about that. Um, so that is, how can I put this in a way that Adrian is not going to glare at me? Those are the those are the dates that we would like to do things by. Um, if we have to tweak it slightly and give you a couple more weeks, I don't see any problems with going to the SRO board and saying, hey, this is going to be delayed by two weeks because we needed to give a little bit more runway to these to these users because they only got the API 20 days before the turnoff. I think I think we're fair like that and we've got a good relationship with our SRO board. Adrian, would you agree with that? I know that I've put words in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you have some more. I don't have an issue with that. Oh, I think um, I we had hoped to have it out by today, um, but we we want to make some improvements to make sure that it was um, uh, to make sure that it, it was extensible in the future. Um, and so we we're just doing a couple of extra things that's going to really improve things. We recognise that's probably a bit later than we'd like to have been. So I think if people want time in January, I mean, it's fair to say we weren't planning to switch things off on the 1st of January because I will still be on holiday then. I'm probably not back myself until the 4th. As will I. Um, so it, it was always, let's push for that day. It'll be sometime after Christmas. I think if people said to us 15th of January, we, um, completely relaxed about that. The only thing that we have to be careful of is the longer that we push that date out, the longer, uh, the less time that we have to then um, start to work on the pod. <clears throat> So I won't want to see that going out too far, but yes, yeah, certainly if you need a few weeks after Christmas, that, that's not going to be an issue. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to derail what you're what you're doing here too much. So um, I would love to be able to set up a, a call or something so we can talk through the consumer API side in a lot more detail. If that's okay. That sounds fantastic. Um, if you send an email to me or Adrian, I'll make sure to put them up in on the on the board in a second um we'll be able to organize that and we'll also organize it with our tech lead or somebody from our technical team so um there's actual proper developer cody cody type people who can answer your questions can we Adrian? assume that chris is interested and if anybody else wants to ping me an email i will i will set something up and we'll pop something in the newsletter um next week um, advertising it Okay, could you drop your email into the chat just so I can drop, I can send you that email and get that stuff? Uh, yes, just let me, uh, Adrian, could you do that for the two, for both of our emails? Um, okay, and if anyone else, much. if anyone else on here wants to come along to that, please just let us know. You're more than welcome. Um, we also know that there are some people who, um, might need a little bit of technical support and that is one of the things that we've always offered is if you need a little bit of extra help um, with your systems or you want to talk to our developers to try and understand what they're trying what we've done and can they talk you through how or can they hold your hand while you update your systems we are more than happy to do that if you need um, we know that bod's provided something similar as well of just that extra that extra bit of developer support. 
Um, we've got about 30 seconds left on the board. Hopefully people are putting nice things about us and nice things about Naptan. I, uh, so as soon as the bing bong goes off, I'll, I'll go through and start reading through the thing I learned about Naptan this year, and then I'll go on to the best thing about Naptan. And this is probably going to be a slightly shorter meeting than than usual, which is nice. A bit more chilled. So thing I learned about Naptan this year. Naptan is way more complex than I ever realized. Well done for getting your heads around it. Thank you. We'd only ever used the stop CSV file, but knew there were many more. Most aren't relevant, but some are gems. It'd be really good to understand which ones are gems because stops.csv is the only one that, that we are still producing at the moment. And if we need to bring in another one, um, it'd be really good to know which of those are gems. There's less consistency in understanding the data rules than I thought, and somebody agrees with that. That Naptan is a substantial data set that if used to its full power potential is very powerful. Absolutely, Naptan is like solid gold. This is the one of the best little data sets that runs so much of the country um, and so much of the infrastructure. And it's it it just needs a bit more love and a bit more care and attention and a bit of bit of a polish and a buff up. Um, being becoming aware of the great variation in how source data is provided by local authorities. That is one of the things that I've really understood as well, is that everyone's local situation is different. Everyone's doing things slightly differently um, and understanding. Um, didn't know that Naptan corrected assumed what short source data should be. And somebody said, neither did I. I am shocked by this. It is slightly bad. There's, we're, we're uncovering more and more as people are starting to use, more people are using the public beta, the live new NAPTAN. We're starting to uncover more things. One of the things that we've also been doing um, is current NAPTAN can actually output a file that's invalid, and it currently does because it's got a couple of stops that have two stop areas. And although we've corrected the data at source, it's not corrected in current NAPTAN. Um, on new NAPTAN, all of the data that's output is ran, run through the same validator that it's, it's run through when it's inputted. So what we do is we make sure in whatever we've done and combining data and pulling data together, that we've not broken anything on the system, that it's still a valid NAPTAN file and will pass through the various schemas. So that's also just double checking and making sure that everything's there. Um, so the best thing of working with Naptan this year. It's been nice to be involved and in that you have actively sought views to help shape the future of Naptan. As a data consumer, hearing from data providers on the other side of the fence. Good to have discussions with others around the country that know what Naptan is and does. I feel less like I'm shouting into the wilderness. Great to see Naptan getting the attention it deserves and to be consulted. Lots of consultation and effort to understand how it's being used. The way that you and Adrian have involved all the relevant users of Naptan in such a proactive and involved way. My point of view that big things depend on getting the minutiae right is shared by others. Getting the chance to build Naptan into corporate IT systems given the API on the horizon. Uh, great to have the discussion and collaboration with other authorities and understand the various difficulties and common problems so that we can come up with solutions. Thank you. Uh, those are all amazing and really good to know. Um, is there anything else that we need to cover there? And then, so, just the very last thing today, um, and it's our Christmas party, so of course we'll finish early and everyone can go off and have an hour um, pretending you're at the Naptan Christmas party, we can all hop on a bus and celebrate, is um, I want you to really think about, if you've worked with us, what you'd like to tell the Naptan team. What's given you joy and what was good and useful of working with the Naptan team? 
what frustrated you? What was not good or not useful in the way that we worked? And what's made you sad? What things were missing and what things should have happened with working with us? And it'd be, it's really great if you can give us this feedback because we've used that all the time to iterate and to work on how we run these meetings, how we run our interactions with you and how we communicate out to the wider world. So um, what I can do is, I, is I'll give you five minutes to fill, to put any thoughts up there. Um, or you can come back later and put them up. And if it wasn't quite so sexist in 1950s, I'd put up some some gifts and images from on the buses and other kinds of celebrations to celebrate us getting through this year of of naptan but i kind of feel like they may not be the sort of things to use and i can't think of any really good bus sitcoms or stories or 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 anything that i could i could use in the space if anyone can think of a good one um i'd be more than happy to know it um even the bus storyline from sex education is not one that I feel can be used here. Um, those who've watched sex education will understand why. So what I might do is do this almost like we would do a retrospective uh, as part of our agile practices. So what I'm going to do is I will read through the good stuff because that always makes us feel good going in. And then I'll read through the um, things that are frustrating and the things that are sad and what I'll do is I'll try to then either provide some answers or some context and we'll group them and I'm going to give people a couple of votes and we'll vote on the things that we discuss. Does that sound a reasonable idea to everybody? I can see Adrian but nobody else so I just need somebody to kind of nod or, or give me some looks. Excellent, we'll go through and do that. So I believe the bing bong's just gone so what I'll do is I'll go through what, what gave you joy, what was good and useful first. <clears throat> At first, I wasn't a fan of the icebreaker, but then it started, started to look forward to the questions that you would come up with. Why, thank you. Lots of NAPTAN problems have lingered on for years. Great to see a collective effort to address them. Collab coll collaboration is key, and these sessions have promoted that. The project management methodology used with this mural app is great. I'd like our internal team to use this and be as good. I'm more than happy to come and give you half an hour or an hour of <laughs> mural, how to make it great and how, how to work through it, some of this. Regular communication has been appreciated. Mural is a very useful tool with these remote meetings. The DFT are very responsive to questions and queries, feel like comments are being listened to. The collaboration between us all during this year, being asked, being heard, and seeing the outcome. I'm going to join those two together. The data is available faster from the time of upload. Oh, yeah, that's one of the other things. Um, new NAPTAN can output data. I think the longest it's taken has been under 10 minutes, but we're not quite we're not 100% sure, but we think it's definitely under 10 minutes um, because we haven't been focusing on timing it. Um, that's from uploading the data and it being processed and available in all the different, all the four formats. So um, that's quite a bit faster and that's something that we're really looking into as to how we can keep that and make it as smooth as possible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the frustration and the sadness, move these around a little bit and group them and then we'll vote on the groupings. So data consumers needs have not been considered in the beta's current implementation. Um, I'd really like to understand if the person who wrote this was involved in any of the, got involved in any of the user testing. Chris. Uh, that, yeah, that was that was me who wrote that one. Um, we have been involved, um, not me personally. Um, we had uh, another member of my team was involved and I've taken over for him for these meetings, but we have been involved since, since the start of this. Um, and we've been quite clear, I think, about what our needs are as a, as a consumer. And uh, I understand what you've been saying about pivoting a little bit, um, but we uh, currently we're at a point where we're being told that the new nap time is being turned off 
we need to start using a new one, mm -hmm. but that's that's not suitable for our needs at the moment. So I want to dig further into into why that hasn't happened and what, and what we need it to do. Okay, because it'd be really good to understand why the person who came along wasn't getting involved as part of one of the groups that we did or all the private beaters with. As you saw, we've been testing with people all the way through since April. Well, before April, we've been working with the, with the data consumers to really understand people's needs. So I'm sorry that you were missed out of that, um, but it's trying to understand how, how that gap happened and ensuring it's not going to happen in the future when we hit NubTig and we hit the other pieces, I think is really, really important. Yeah, I can certainly, I, certainly, I don't want to, I want to oh. say I really appreciate how how much care you're you're trying to put into that, and you clearly are showing that you it's it's really important to you. And um, I think you're doing the right things. We just the frustration is we haven't ended up with what we needed. So it's it's not from lack of effort, but it's just mm. yeah something something's dropped along the way there. Yeah, yeah. And let's so let's spend some time a helping you resolve. The actual problem but also understanding how it happened so we make sure that it doesn't happen again and it doesn't happen with other with other consumers yeah, so thanks okay. chris um unclear switch over plan from current to new naptan um i can go back over the migration plan if if anyone wants or is it or is the unclarity about the time uh, that was me again it's a little bit of both it's i we don't know exactly where it's going to live as in what url it's going to live on at the moment, whether that's going to be still, I mean, at the moment it's beta Naptan, um, whether that's going to change, where that's going to end up, um, whether the new one's going to have some grace time where it's still going to live, even though everyone's supposed to be using a new one, or whether it's just going to be turned off straight on 31st. We've not really, I've either missed or we haven't had that communication. Yeah, I think let's, let's catch up and just make sure make sure on that one um like we said it's we're not around on the 31st so it ain't going to be turned off on the 31st it'll probably be but that was the goal but if we need to extend it if we need to understand that there's something that says actually you've got to pivot and extend this and here's why we can actually go and make that and make that case and really understand what the important little pivot for us might be um how complex naptan is but has to be how we all think differently about what we call things. Not all has been relevant to me as a data consumer. Totally understand. And I know that we've focused a lot on the data producers at various points in time and trying to get some of this. So we've tried to indicate what all these different scenarios are about and why we've been doing this session over, over other sessions. Should NubTig, NAPTAN reference local land and property gazetteer slash ordnance survey TOIDs? I don't know what a TOID is. If somebody could tell me what a TOID is, that would be really useful. I can answer that if you want. It's a like a ordnance survey link ID. Uh, it's like ah. a unique reference for ordnance survey data. Um, should Should it do that? That's a really great question, and that's something that I think we can have a look at when we look at the future of NAPTAN, how NAPTAN should look like in two to three to five years. What should what else should it link to, and how should it how should it reference these things? The data still cannot be directly contributed to by operators. Local transport authorities still need to be involved. I think that's an interesting point, and I think there will be some conflicting responses on that one depending on who you are and where you are. And that is something that we want to look at is how do we make that communication smoother? How do we make those things better so that there is an owner for the NAPTAN data, but how do people say, eh, what's going on? And we and publicly monitor the response times perhaps. Data is no longer consistent. For example, missing information that was previously there, let long, etc. Oh, I can answer this one. Uh, and that links to this one. We now have to convert Easting Norsings to let long ourselves. Are we doing the same as others? Probably not. Um, so this was NAPTAN was doing some work that local authorities so it was taking the local authorities' data and putting in a latitude, longitude, or an Eastings, Northings. 
However, some of the ways that it calculated those and the ways that it put it into the data meant that either data was being miscalculated, so it was showing greater precision than was given in the original, or in some cases it was slightly overwriting data. So what we wanted to do was ensure that we were not repeating that, and that's why if the local authority hasn't provided a latitude longitude, we don't put out a lat long. If they haven't provided an eastings northings, new NAPTAN doesn't put out a new eastings and an eastings northings. So it'll either be one or the other, and then it's going to be up to different people. And we are going to. I see that Dan's got his hand up, um, and it's going to be up to the local authorities to resolve some of those issues. Dan. I know this has caused you problems. It has indeed. Uh, and Adrian's been great kind of talking me through it. My question then would be if you mandate just one format, uh, such as Easting North Things, then don't even include the lat long as part of it potentially. I think the problem is when you have half of it filled in one format, half of it filled in the other format, mm. it just gets a bit confusing for us as a consumer of the data, which one to read automatically or not. I can totally understand, Dan, and that's one of the things that we want to look look at with the future pieces of NAPTAN is which one should we mandate? Which one is the most useful one? And which one can the most people put in with the minimum amount of effort? Adrian. Just on that, we I did some checks a couple of weeks ago and there were only 260 stops that don't have an east in northern. So everything else does have an east in northern. Those 260 stops, are, 260 stops are all in the Atlantic. Um, and we're working with the authorities to get those stops sort of deleted or removed. And this is part of the archive <clears throat> deleted, not existing. There isn't currently a reliable way of removing stops permanently. And that's one of the things that we've taken from the working groups that we're going to be looking at. Um, me and our other service designer are looking at how we would build that service in and what we would give to Adrian and say, if you if we need to be able to delete stops permanently, here's some of the services, here's some of the pieces that need to be designed for it. Dan, did that answer your question? Yeah, I think cool. it did. I think, I think cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I just mention something on the, um, we haven't changed the structure of the CSV file. Um, I just wanted to make that clear. There are some fields that are different, so we haven't put in the notes field um, because some of the notes fields had personal information in and referenced people. And so we've just taken the decision to take that out because a lot of it was put in quite a long time ago anyway. Um, so there are some subtle differences in the content in the fields, but we haven't changed the structure of the CSV file, so that will still present itself the same in the same way. Thank you for that reminder, Adrian. Uh, Chris, I see you've got your hand up. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Just a, a quick question. I uh, for Adrian, I I missed slightly what you said about the 260 stops. Is that 260 that don't have any location data, or 260 that have only eastings and northings? Um, the those 260 um, have incorrect east and northings, um, oh, incorrect which, ones. which positions them in the north in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Um, um, every, everything else has an east in northern, to, to my understanding. I okay. yeah, and this is part of some of our data quality checks. Um, there is, I I need to run it past the working group, and Chris, I will run it past you as well. That we've got an idea of what services might actually make data checking and data quality better than adding in business rules. So we want to have a look at. I want to take it back to the working group before I take it out publicly. Um, just to confirm that I've totally understood all of the nuances that they gave me. So that is something that's going to be coming up. I hate to do a coming up. I've just run out of, literally run out of time to get stuff done. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, one of our concerns is is just about how, whether we're doing it the same as everyone else and inconsistency. So that'd be good to talk about. Absolutely. Um, just one last one here. Nubtig was the forerunner of NAPTAN per Habs. Nubtig should have been looked at first. Nah. Hindsight's 2020. Um, it was also the one that was in most dire need of moving. And if it fell over, would have affected the most things, I think, is where we went. Certainly back in the day when I was setting up NubTig or NatGaz, as we called it then, I had no idea the end product was intended to be. It might have been implemented slightly differently if I'd known. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hindsight is beautiful. And I think this is one of the things that we want to 
look at and go, if we went to the future for this, what would we still do? What would we throw away? What would we start again on? What would we keep? What's the what's the good stuff in here? And what's the stuff that we're like, hey, if we got a chance to build this again, we'd do something like this. And we can sit down and go, well, could we sit down and do something like that? Could we rebuild some of this? Could we link it into um, the National Gazetteer rather than into having our own Gazetteer? All those little questions we want to sit down in and have a look at. Um, Let's just have a look at what Maida said. The other departments are slowing down the development in some of the linked areas we had so been hoping could be updated at the same time. Um, is that a reference to BODS or is that a reference to other departments? Could somebody help me out with this one? Okay. Uh, I'll just take, we'll just do our best guesses on that one. I feel like the data could have been improved upon at the moment we are just rebuilding what we have and offering different ways of access. Um, we are very, very much concerned about data quality and trying to improve the quality of the data. And that's a lot of what we've been driving all the way through this year. You might have noted that I have been running business rules about every two months at least, if not more. Um, we've spent a lot of time talking about data quality and trying to figure out the best way to implement it. And that's been one of the things of, if we'd just gone in and implemented the business rules as they are now, that wouldn't have increased the data quality. It would have continued to remain, this, remain the same. So we're trying to sit down and look at what we can do to move the dial on data quality. Jay, um, just on that, I mean, is it worth mentioning? We have done quite a lot of work on data quality behind the scenes and chasing up sort of local authorities. And oh, suggesting. yeah. We don't sort of publicise a lot of that work that we do because it's just sort of, you know, we get notified of an issue and then we, <laughs> we go and fix it and it's it's, it's not really, it doesn't really feel noteworthy. The, 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 what was it, 90 plus thousand um, created dates and modified dates that, that, that we got amended so that they're now correct. Um, we had created dates that were before modified dates and all kinds of craziness around the dates that we've fixed. We've fixed quite a lot of pieces, as as Adrian says, but mm -hmm. they've been quiet fixes because we've done it at source. It's happened in both current NAPTAN when it's been able to run it and new NAPTAN as well. So we've been quietly improving data quality. Um, uh, I've just noticed there are three stops in witness that have been put in 680. So there's th these little things, um, you know, I've just spotted that today, we're, we're going to go and chase that up and, and work out, should they be in Scotland or should they be in Witness um, uh, and to get those tidied up. So if you do have things that you spot like that, if you let us know, we will, we've got a list of them and we're, we're going through them. So please do get in touch. If you see something that's bugged you for a long time and, you, and you've and you just not known what to do with it, then uh, let us know and we'll see what we can do. Or if you've written a script to ignore something, be aware that 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 those that those little scripts are not helping the the quality the core quality improve. Um, my primary motivation for joining was to ensure that all consuming systems would display the same bus stop names across all contexts. Doesn't feel like we've got so far in tackling that problem. We have done a lot of work. Oh my God, bus stop naming conventions has is going to be the thing that haunts me forever. Um, the working group came out really, really good on this. Um, and what we're going to do is um, when I've gone back to the working group and said, this is all what we've decided, what, how does this look like as a way of going forward, um, we'll start to publicise that. So hopefully that explains that one. So uh, we've got about half an hour left. So of the things that in the, that's in the frustrated column and in the sad column, I'm going to give everybody um, I'm going to give everybody hmm, three votes. And what I'd like you to do is vote on the things that you would most like to talk about. So you can put all three on the one thing, or you can just put your one vote anywhere. But anything that's in the frustrated column or the sad column, put some, put some dots on there and let me know how you're going. And I will just ignore myself at the voting session. Um, hopefully everybody has figured out how to vote. You just click on it. And if you want to take it off, you kind of right click and it will come up with some uh, little drop down to help you figure that out.
I love the way that we're going to have Null Island and then we'll discover that there is Null Island somewhere up in some lock or some or or the back end of nowhere or just off the off the Cornish coast that there is actually something that somebody has actually named Null Island and that will create all kinds of problems. Um, so we've got a few people who have finished voting. Chris. I'm very sorry. I had to answer the door very quickly, so I missed what we're voting on. Uh, we're voting on anything that's in the frustrated or the sad column. So the column with the with with the little red person at the top or the blue person okay. at the top, just vote on any of those stickies. You've got three votes. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. We all have lives that 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 try and continue at the moment. I apparently have voted on something. I don't know how I did that. Okay, so we've got a couple of people still voting. I'll give the ones with one vote left a few seconds to finish off their voting. And then I'll assume everyone else has kind of had to drop off because they've had to drop off and they're just sitting in the mural. So Neil, okay, right. I'm gonna call an end to the voting session and let's see how this goes. So we want to talk about bus stop names. Then we want to talk about um, the local transport authorities. Then there's a square box, and I think I'll figure that one out. We now have to convert Eastings and Northings. So let me just have a look and see, Adrian, if you can help me mark out the ones that have the most votes. I know that there's a nine here. If we just grab the icons and use the circle ones, that's going to help. So that's a nine. Is there anything else that adds up to a nine? That's a two and a three so that becomes a five so i think that's number two and number six is just there is there anything more than six floating around no so we've no, got three things to talk about excellent so let's start off with our big nine um so we come up here to the one with a nine on it. Bus stop names. I would love to talk about it and I don't wish to talk about it until I've spoken to the people from the working group because I think it's only fair to get them to comment back first on this. But I'm really interested in hearing people's comments about bus stop names and what they think bus stop names should be. So what I'd like to give you is I'd like to give you two minutes, just really quick two minutes to put in how you think a bus stop name should be displayed across all contexts. Just write out whether it's common name, landmark, locality, just put it in as best as you can. And I'll give you two minutes to do it and then we'll talk through those. So this is a bit of a gorilla session, just throw it in by the number nine and just put in what you think a bus stop name should look like. Okay, so that's been the end of the time. I was uh, just hunting for a, a good Montero call me by your name image to put there, but I can't. Um, so let's just run through. We've got common name. It should be whatever makes sense to a member of the public, e.g. common name slash town. We've got actor code and hex, and I heartily appreciate Christmas humor. Um, this one, I'm just gonna make a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to hide everyone's curses. Yeah, I, I can't see things. I, I don't get the hex joke. Could you explain? Um, it would literally be the acto code as um, if, if something, 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 something. So it's turning it into almost like your color combinations and things like that. Um, so it's taking something that is coded and turning it into something that's even more arcanely coded. 
I would expect to see it in binary or in, uh, yeah, hex code is, is also completely fine. Or machine code if we want to get completely geeky. Uh, consistent across authority so customers don't have to learn each area's names and data consumers can easily present the name. Common name slash landmark. So we're getting, we, we know we want it consistent. Co locality common name indicator. So we've got like, we've got common name in the middle. We've got common name at the start. We've got common name at the start. We've got just common name. Add the customer's discretion built from that TAN data taken from Trans Exchange. Call them different names than we use already. Should match the name written on the bus stop flag. Well, that's a brilliant one. That's a really good one, but we don't know whether that's the common name because that will vary by authorities. Bus stop naming has to differ in regions due to the different environments, e.g. rural, urban or city. What we need is a common way of providing that in NAPTAN consumers stick to ensure that all information sources have the same naming of a stop, whoever provider, app, website, etc. is. Totally agree. Locality, common name. This is not always a landmark and street and indicator. So we've got locality first. Um, the problem is that whatever combination of fields are selected, then the error messages need to be sensible. Currently have a small village with one pair of bus stops. The locality is Duns Dunsdale. The village is Dunsdale. So the stop could be Dunsdale since there is just one pair. But this throws up errors. So I call the locality Dunsdale and shop stop name village. But they get an error message as I have a number of stops called village across my area. And this is one of the things that we, I think that the business rules are putting us slightly in the wrong direction. So this is one of the things that I'm taking to the working groups where we talked about data quality and presenting them a couple of ideas that we've been working on. Um, and finally, it depends on use case primarily. If use case is destination in front of a bus, then paralocality might be enough, e.g. St. Albans. If the case is a hyper-local navigation in a city, e.g. common name plus indicator, e.g. St. John Street, City Road, Stop D, but in same use case in rural, just the common name, e.g. the Plough Pub, we need to define all the different use cases first. That's also a really good point. And this is why one of the hardest things has been to figure out name and data quality because name data quality mapping and bearing are this little three-way or four-way mix of things that are all really important and make so much sense on data quality and it would be easy if everyone said this is how a bus stop should be named so one of the things to come out of the working group was literally the little ladybird bus of book of bus stops, which is going to be, these are our best ideas of how we think we do this, so that data producers and data consumers have a really super simple guide to this is how a data producer has put stuff together, this is what it looks like on the street, and this is how you pull that data and, 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 and use it. But one of the things the data producers in that working group agreed is that they aren't consistent. They are doing slightly different things at the moment. And one of the things that we want to do is build a working group. <laughs> I hate to say is build a group, uh, build a wider working group to discuss how things should be named and really come up with ways and, and agreements and then talk about them so that data consumers have a better sense of what's going on. Does that help anybody? Does this hinder anybody? Has this provided any more questions for anybody? Uh, yeah, it's helped me a lot, Dr. J. I was, um, I don't think I got myself on that user group, the working group, uh, I'd have liked to have done. I, I, I there's some sessions I couldn't make. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would be yeah. it. But yeah, it, it is a, for, I think from the perspective of data consumers, it's, um, it, it's a really big one. And it would be great to be involved in that. And it's just, as with all these things, you know, this isn't criticism. These are hard problems and we've got all the right people to solve them and the collaboration is really good. But it'd be nice to have that as a focus. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why one of the focuses has been business rules, but I'm actually changing that to talk about data quality. Um, and naming is kind of one of the key points of that um, and trying to get those consumers, the consumers and producers in the room and talking to each other is really huge as well. Because I think if you hear what people are trying to do, 
um, and understanding that a lot of it is people are trying to do something with maybe a mechanism that doesn't allow them to do what they should do, like the Dunstale problem. Um, Chris, you're, you've got your hand up as well. Oh yeah, I just want to back up that this is a really hard problem. We get we see this a lot with um, with our apps and our websites, and then the operators who use it, and they all because we work across the UK, they all have different needs, and trying to meet all those different needs and the different sizes of locality, like have it like one of the worst ones is just um, uh, Premier, as in the, the the off license. So there's lots of stops outside Premiers that are called Premier, but you might only have one in your town or you might have 10 and what to call those. And yeah, it's a really difficult problem. So I can appreciate this. It's not an easy one to answer. Um, I think I, for whatever reason, I've missed out on this working group. So um, I'd be interested to be involved uh, going forward. I think that's part of what I wanted to take to the small working group that we set up. It was, it was about six or seven of us who got together just to kind of deep dive into this problem. Um, and one of the things that definitely came out is we need to have these groups regularly and they suggested having them run by DFT so that there's no um, onus, there's no onus on particular groups. It's, it's as neutral as possible. Um, Somebody else has their hand up, and I'm just trying to figure out who it is. Just bear with me here two seconds. It is Chris. Could be me. Could be me. Hi. Um, I, I, I've been off, I'm afraid, on different meetings, so I just could jump back in on this one. We're back to the bus stop naming. I, I don't know whether Naptan should be insisting on having a single standard naming process. I think what Naptan needs to do is to contain all of the component parts that people need and then uh, insist that those follow certain standards, you know, the name, the locality, the street name, and the indicator and the rest of it, and however many you want. But I think that's all you need to do. And then it's down to the consumers to actually rearrange them and put them in order, to be perfectly honest. Then you, you, don't, you get away from the argument as to the ultimate bus stop name. I, I agree with you on that. I think part of the problem is, is getting people to agree on the ways that they use those different fields as well so that it's as consistent as possible people understand the different ways that other people are using those stops and this has come up when it when we hit the school stops as well because how do people indicate that it's a school stop because they have we talked about premiers how many schools there are um, or stops just called school stop um, but also how do you code in some of those school stops that shouldn't be seen that that are private because they're only for some of the the private school routes or the or the or the closed school routes for school buses and how do you allow those to be tagged in? There are stops that are for community buses which aren't in bods but do need to be in Naptan so somebody can plan their journey across those community buses, those small little buses, and how do you get those in? And there's just so many little edge cases like that that it's it's all about just trying to make sure that there's enough information but also what the producers are doing is communicated to the people who are consuming the data otherwise everyone's trying to put business rules in to constrain stuff which actually makes the producer's job harder so they all find different ways around it hmm. the different ways around every business rule has just boggled my mind um the way people think about the problem and go, oh, but I've done it in this field. And somebody else says, oh, and I did it in this field. And somebody else goes, oh, I do it in this field. And I'm just sitting there going, and this was all because somebody put in a business rule that says in this field, you can't say this word. And I'm just, and it's, so it, it's coming down to pieces like that, that I'm just trying to pull apart and make sense of. Uh, Dave. Yeah, I, I don't want to open it up too much. I don't want to do the Pandora's box thing on us all right now. Um, I suppose knowing that I think this is why we need the working group and we need both sides on because I think from the data consumers point of view it, another way of doing this and I think it's way out of scope of what we're looking at would be for the data producers they know they know what names they should be and they're putting populating fields to try and allow people to recreate those names but one way is to just say in this use case this is the name you'll use and it duplicates things as well so there might be one called totem name on the totem pole for, for, uh, for bus stop there's a name there use that you know it, it or the fields duplicated yeah. you still need them 
Uh, there's another one called hyperlocal name. So if you're on the street yeah. and you've got a point of view, etc., there might be three, four, five of those. Uh, it's another way. I know it's more work. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. I'm, I'm, you know, I think yeah. there's a lot of options out there. Yeah. And I think I think those are all really great ideas. And this was part of the idea of moving through. Sorry, whoever's got the phone ringing, I'm just going to mute you. Um, those are all really great ideas. And that was part of the idea of um, almost simplifying describing the problem by creating the little book of bus stops of saying, look, here's what a bus stop looks like. And here's what we name this part of it and this part of it. And this is where you show it's here and where you show it's here. And this is what a landmark means and stuff like that. Um, just simplifying it and getting people to describe the different ways that they're doing it and then coalescing around, oh, actually, this looks like the best way of doing it in this situation is actually really useful. And I think, Dave, your ideas are brilliant and they're the sort of thing that we want to bring into the future of NAPTAN and look at just telling where a bus stop is is not enough. You've got to describe the different parts of it and do we re rejig some of the schema to make some of this a little bit easier? Um, how do we do this so that we can do it in Welsh as well as English at the same time? Um, because there's a lot of running out of characters when people try to do it in English and in Welsh in a single field and how do we, because Welsh is long, how do we help people with those kind of problems so that if they want to show it in English and in Welsh, they can show the English version and then the Welsh version and then the English version and then the Welsh version and it fits nicely on the screens. Um, all of these little things we want to sit down and really chew on a little bit more. So yes, data quality is what we focused on. We have 15 minutes left or thereabouts, or no, 10 minutes, I can't count. So let's move on to the thing that came up number six, which was, oh, another contentious one, because why not bring the contentious things to the Christmas party? Um, the data still cannot be directly contributed to by operators. Local transport authorities need to be involved. Now, what I would like is one local transport authority to give their view and then one person who works with the data with the bus operators to give their view and then we'll get a little bit more from each side but I'd like to hear from a local transport authority first and then from a um, bus operator. So who from a local transport authority would like to speak up? Rebecca. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I thought you would. I was going, of all the people, Rebecca's likely to be the one for me. Um, no, I just want to say that um, um, as the as a, um, a an operator being able to uh, do anything direct to Naptan um, would be a big no-no to me. Um, absolutely not. Um, mainly because um, as a local authority, um, we not only are responsible for data, but we actually physically own the bus stops. So we're responsible for for citing them, for maintaining them, for updating the naming on them um, and making sure everything linked together. So if a, an operator decided to change that, that would be a nightmare because it's not necessarily just one operator that actually um, serves that stop. There could be several operators so if they all it's a bit of a free-for-all it'd be forever changing what we do in south yorkshire is we work closely with the operators so that we have that um, ability to have those conversations early on um, to understand where stops are required um, for what services if there if there is any discussions about naming the operators in our district know what our naming convention is so they're more than happy with that but if there was any issues around that, they can come to us, they can talk about it and we can consider other names. Um, so I think it's not just a case of the operator should be able to just go, yeah, I, I want to change something in that. That, that. No, that'd be a nightmare. But I think it should just be able in any authority to have that open discussion with the operators and to make sure you you are all happy with the end result. That's really great. Thank you, Rebecca. Is there somebody on, on here who's a bus operator who could give a viewpoint as to why, from a bus operator's point of view, this is something that you'd like to do? Chris. 
Uh, I'm not a bus operator, uh, but we uh, consume on behalf of the bus operators. Um, so, I mean, if there is a bus operator here, I'd be I'd love to hear their viewpoint on this as well. But as there was a bit of silence, um, I, I thought I'd just uh, put in my two cents, which is that because um, I wrote that um, post it, and um, I certainly didn't mean for that we want bus operators to be able to just make the data themselves. Um, but uh, it would it would really help uh, our systems if bus operators would be able to um, su easily through a system like Naptan suggest amendments where they've spotted that things are wrong to get them in there quickly, like uh, a bearing is in the wrong direction, for example, um, things like that. At the moment, it's a very slow process from the point where they realize there's something wrong to it being in our system. And when they tell us, you know, can, can you correct it? Well, we say, well, no, because we get that data from Naptan. So they have to go through the process of updating Naptan, which can take quite a while. So um, I realize it's further down your roadmap, but I think it'd be great if that was something that this new Naptan service could provide. Um, so, oh, Neil, I'd love to hear from you before I give my thoughts. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say that um, I'm sort of one step removed because I'm in, in a sort of I'm not quite an ivory tower, but I'm not in, a, in one of the depots. Um, I sort of sit in front of my GIS system and do stuff. But um, as far as I understand it, not all bus stops are actually owned by local authorities. Um, and some of them, um, of cases when, you know, when, when we're trying to get information updated on shelters, you know, there can be a significant time lag. Um, and whether that be getting information uh, updated on the actual stop itself, or um, things repaired on stops, or data about those stops um, corrected. The time, like, I mean, I, and it's, it's one of those things that I'm not suggesting a sort of Wikipedia type approach, more like a peer reviewed journal where an operator could um, suggest changes and, and have a sort of timely expedited update of, of data as opposed to a free for all where, you know, you can type in and change the name to, you know, this bus stop is called Elvis uh, and that sort of thing. I think that's a really good idea. Um, one of the things that I'm wanting to look at is how we build. Now we've got a better, OK, not to slam current nap 10, but I think you're aware that we lost for for various reasons. We do not have contact details for a number of local transport authorities, um, historical reasons. What we're trying to do is now we've got contacts for everybody is building up something without the release of PII information. So without people's names being exposed to members of the public or anyone else without their consent, there is a mechanism for messages to be sent from somebody saying, hey, the snap and stop, it needs to be changed and here's the reason why. Also in a way that DFT can be aware of it so we can keep on top of it and say, actually, this local transport authority is not doing its thing. What do we need to do? Because there is a BODS push towards quality. There is a BODS push towards updating on a particular cadence because time equals quality, maybe, but maybe not. But how do we how do we ensure that the information is getting its way through in a timely fashion? Um, we know that there are missed connections a lot of time. Um, in the Naptan ecosystem, and we want to, which is, you know, hilarious in the way that you think about Naptan, but it's also, it's about making sure that if you're working with SYMCA, um, you can send some, you can send a message to them and it's tracked and you know that we know that SYMCA has been alerted of a problem and we can start to manage that. We can start to measure response times, but we need everyone on the local transport authorities to agree to something like this. We need to plan out and build something like this. So expect us to talk about something like this a lot next year as well, because it's a really nice idea of just smoothing out that communications gap. Because I agree, I don't think it's a Wikipedia free for all solution. I think it's a communications gap that's that's appeared and there's misconnections and we just need to find ways of making those connections happen. Uh, Chris, you had your hand up and took it down. Either I answered your point or you've decided it's a, you're, you've given up to make your point. No, I was just going oh, to say it's a communications thing. Um, 
and I just say in Oxfordshire, we use for a whole variety of reasons, in actual fact, to fix my street. And although um, it takes some in, interesting um, uh, getting in, information in the background, getting getting it sent to the right people, at least um, we have we have had bus stop um, queries sent in by members of the public and in fact by bus operators as well through Fix My Street. But ultimately, once the contact is made, then obviously people will come directly to you. Anyway, just a thought. Yeah, and I think thank you for backing up that it is just making that connection and having that connection mechanism so a bus operator who may not have much relationship with that local transport authority knows that that first connection is being made but also knows that there's some support if they're not getting a response they can come and say hey can you help us get a response out of these people because again we've got bods and um, the NAPTAN team are working together to try to ensure that quality of data. Rebecca. Yeah, just so that makes makes total sense. I think we, we're lucky how we've always had a really good communication with the operators in our area. Um, so we, we don't really have any of those issues, but obviously you, you do get um, issues picked up from different angles, from you know different points that if there is that central point for that to be fed through to. And like you mentioned, there's some authorities you're not being able to get in touch with. Some areas don't have that um, relationship, I suppose. And to be able to have a central point and also to be able to monitor the response, I think is a really good way forward. Thank you. And Adrian's probably, I can't see him, but he's probably going pale now because I'm constantly suggesting stuff that um that some of uh dft may need to pick up eventually uh trisha you've got a thought yeah i just wanted to really agree with what rebecca said you know as in nottinghamshire are, actually do work with our operators um and it, it is quite well we have um a central source for them to come to and we do have a healthy debate with them all but again we're, we're another authority that own and maintain, maintain everything on street so, um, you know, we are responsible for that flag. We are responsible for that shelter. Um, so we like to keep control over it. But, you know, we're always happy to negotiate with the operators and, you know, try and find some sort of common ground when it comes to the stop names. Yeah, and I, I think there's also something that's come up around which stops are used for timing of runs and things like that, because that impacts on BODs as well. That's a it's almost one of those ones of do you tackle just the timing piece, which is like one one field and one thing, or do you tackle the stop names first? I'm going to sit down and and plan this out and plot this out as best as I can, so that we've got some next year we do some really sensible things around data quality because this move to the new platform means that we can really work on fixing some of this data quality and figure out ways that we can also start to talk about data quality because despite all what we've said. And despite all the stuff that came out from various people a couple of years back, data in NAPTAN is actually not that bad. It's actually pretty good. It's not as awful as people have a narration about. And one of the things that I want to do is ensure that we can actually show that in a really nice subjective way and go, hey, look, here's our report card. This looks really good. We have nice data. And that's going to feel really good of being able to show the quality of NAPTAN and find ways of measuring it. And that's some of what I'm playing with currently. That is about our two hours. We've got two minutes left. Thank you, everyone, for your time, patience, etc. Not just today, but across the entirety of the year. Um, it's been a bit of a journey, as, as, as we said. We've gone from not having anything to going live inside of 12 months which is a pretty fast thing, especially in a government service and a government system with something as big as NAPTAN in terms of um, its importance and how much quality and how much thought has gone into it. Um, before we run away, is there anything else anyone wants to say or I'll just wish you all happy, happy Easter, no, that's not Easter time, is it? Happy holiday stuffs, um, happy New Year stuffs and I'll see you all in January.